Hello there, Snookums. Or Snooky. I'm gonna call you all Snooky. Hello there, Snooky. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you alone. I imagine there might be somebody out there in the long space of the universe who might think, oh my god, is actually talking to me? But in fact, no, I'm not. I'm talking to you all. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. Okay, so what are we doing? Right, we're doing a quick summary here then. Uh, before we do move on, I'm probably going to be sending the turn tonight. It's already nearly 10 o'clock, actually. Uh, so I'll probably be sending it soon, but tomorrow at absolute latest. I just want to go over what we're actually doing here. Uh, so we will have some of these submarines moving over this way. Yes, the Kilipatai, the Mini Kilipatai, is moving this way. They're moving that way. Uh, so we will have a couple more of these guys, obviously definitely within range. See, over here... At Palembang, because we do actually have the air flotilla that has since been loaded, which is really nice. And you can see that we're still unloading elements of the 11th base force as well, which I'm quite happy about. I'm going to have these guys disband so they're not uh, taking up any additional room in the port. And you can see that we actually have <laughs> a lot of ships here right now. I'm looking forward to making use of these guys. We will find uses for them. Uh, but right now, it ensures absolute security of the base, which is nice. Yep, you can see this over here then. Uh, I do have supply uh, more or less under control, but I wouldn't mind having more. I'm kind of tempted to actually lay mines. Do I want to lay mines here at Palembang? Uh, probably not, really. Like, maybe at Mericos Harven, I can actually see where mines could be useful, but I don't think really here. At least not 30. No, I don't think they're really going to be of much use. Uh, so they can continue to unload there. And uh, see, what I was actually contemplating is because we do have a 22nd Air Flotilla over here. Uh, so I can write, okay, well that gives me the ability to use torpedoes out to 18 hexes if I so wish to do so. Uh, which would be obviously like out to here. And I thought, you know, that's really tempting, but I've decided against it. The reason why I've decided against it is what I'm doing now is I'm going to have the G Force continue to actually run naval search. Because I, have, I obviously have the MKB, I'm using bombs. I did consider using the torpedoes, but then it's one of these issues of I don't have as much naval search out here, I don't have as much awareness, I want to know where these targets are because I have means to actually destroy them. Uh, so I thought, you know, it's better to do that. These guys, I'm going to have stand down for the time being, but in fact what I'm going to do is actually have them also naval search. Uh, the reason being, well, it's pretty hard to say no. And in all honesty, I'm considering actually potentially moving them towards, um... Yeah, they might be better off moved towards Bangkok, really. But we do have some there with quite a bit of actual fatigue. It might do as well to actually have them run naval search here. 17 is not too bad. I can use them as an actual airfield bomber squadron, can't I, at the end of the day, so I suppose I will keep them here. I was contemplating them for just a moment to actually have them sent to Bangkok, but they'll be okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do then is actually have them, so these are G3s, we're going to have them run at standard. I'll have them just obviously like, just, just increase the amount of naval surge. It's not a bad thing, really. There we go. <clears throat> it means that these ships over here are going to be subjected to more aerial attack. It also means that we just have a greater chance of actually hitting things and coordinating strikes and actually just being successful in using our submarines out here. You can see that uh, they're still within range, but only barely. Now, what I've got ahead done then is I've moved... I did have a G3 squadron over here at Bangkok. I've actually moved them over here to Victoria Point. Now, I don't actually have an aviation unit here at Victoria Point at this moment in time, but I do have one moving in, and it will arrive tomorrow. It's only got a mile to go, but it will be here, uh, providing that delicious aviation support. I mean, it's not a huge amount. I mean, well, no, then again, it's not insubstantial. I mean, 20 odds, not bad. So I can make use of that. And we have the Air HQ moving into Bangkok, which is good news. That'll give us the actual means to an end there. I've had these forces actually rest in here at this moment in time. Yep. Just waiting on the rest of the actual forces to move out that way. He has been actually bombing us out here in these airfields. I'm not entirely sure uh, if I even want to reply to that as of yet, really. Yeah, things are going well. We're going to be hitting Singapore once again, which is good. And we'll continue to unload our forces. What I'm going to be doing here as well, we did have an interesting battle at Johor Bahru yesterday. 
went fairly well. It went really well. It went better than an actual victory, which doesn't sound right. Think, well, how can you have better than a victory? See, the reason is because we didn't actually force them out of the hex, and we took very minimal casualties. Like, it says 48 casualties here, but we can actually recover that pretty damn quick in the future. We didn't lose that much in the way of actual salt value, which is nice. Maybe about 10 salt value in total. Uh, but he lost, obviously, 5 scores destroyed, 21 disabled, 1, 8, uh, 2, and then 7 guns. But yeah, he lost 389 casualties. The fortifications were reduced from level 1 to level 2, and I don't think he's going to be able to replace that. Uh, not by next turn. It wouldn't take him long to replace it, but he's not going to have it done by then. So you can see that we had 412 there, 246, obviously that fortification did help. So... Attacking him again, he'll probably lose this time. He may not lose. He may not lose. Um, but I don't imagine it's going to take much to actually force him out. But what I want to do here then is I want to actually push him... Mm. Well, I don't know. I don't really want to push him out to the hex. But I do want to continue to beat him up, essentially. So that's something to bear in mind. I had considered actually wrestling them while having them just defend. But then again, with the unit in the hex, it just it just makes no odds. I might as well just attack them again, force them out of the hex, and then I can actually rest if I so wish to do so. Uh, fatigue's not tremendous, and they will recover it decently quick once Johoburu is ours. I mean, it's a size 2 pole, size 4 airfield, so yeah, we should be able to recover that pretty quickly, uh, frankly. Ideally, anyway. It depends, really. There's not going to be a huge amount of actual opposition over here at Singapore. I may go ahead and bring the 3rd Division down here just to guarantee the victory. The 3rd Division, the Imperial Guard Division, will be here. Uh, so that would arrive on the 24th. It would take the 25th, 26th before it arrived over here at Johor the Roo, Uh At which point these guys obviously would have had about 3 days. Well, one, yeah, about 3... Yeah, well, this Division would have had 3 days extra here. And I'm going to assume that uh, potentially 2 of those could be rest. Uh, we would have the actual division, the 4th division, and then obviously the 7th tank regiment and the, when is it, 4th tank regiment. 4th, yeah, there you go, that's why it confused me. Uh, so yes, they would have had two days at that point over here at uh, Johor the Root. So I think we might go for that. I could probably take it with just the two divisions and the tank regiments. It might be potentially worthwhile to actually have the third uh, division actually join in, potentially even a detachment, but I would like to actually have it head north to Malacca. I think we'll see, we'll take a look at how the division actually looks after the battle tomorrow. Um, we'll have to see about that, but the good news is there's about a hundred odd AV there. It's a little bit more than I had anticipated because I hadn't considered obviously the Mersing uh, division, well, Garrison being there, I, could, I forgot about that really. Uh, but let's see. Yeah, so, 22nd, 27th, they had a total of 148 unmodified. So yeah, this is quite good actually. It is actually causing quite a lot of problems. It's going to hurt him quite considerably, which is nice. I might wait for the 3rd Division just to ensure that when we do shock attack, it would actually ideally be a victory with just overwhelming odds there. I think that could be potentially worthwhile considering. Um, I had hoped that we would have actually been able to force them out in the first attack, but apparently not. But I don't particularly mind. Uh, we should be able to make good of this anyway. The sooner we take Singapore, the better. But it's not going to be long before we take Singapore either way, really. I'm actually loading up some engineers over here. Ah, Kudabaru. I'm also taking the actual two headquarters down here. I'm moving the light cruisers down here to Kuantan so they can actually refuel. So, yeah, uh, these guys are taking the 15th Army and the 25th Army, the rest of the 15th Army and the 25th Army down here to Mersing. They're heading down to Kuantan so they can actually refuel. These guys are taking the 4th, the 23rd and the 15th Independent Engineering Units over here to Walter Luzon. And these guys are alright, they don't have a huge amount of Agile Engineers, and they're not loaded right now, so I can take a look over here. Right, Independence. Yep, yeah, okay. Uh, they don't have a huge amount of Imperial Japanese Army Engineer Squads, but they, they do have some. They have about, what, 16, something like that. Something about sort of region. Uh, and they do have other engineers as well. What makes them good is the fact that it just gives us additional Imperial Japanese engineers and engineers in general. Uh, that we will need a Batan to actually reduce the amount of fortifications that Batan does have. And the good news is I do have the actual 38th Division coming into San Fernando tomorrow. San Fernando's been a busy old port. 
I had considered sending it elsewhere, but then again, I've got a decent escort in here. They don't have too far to go. I'm willing to take a risk just to get them to the front and be actually closer to the front lines. I hadn't actually, I'd actually considered potentially landing them at Lingayan. I considered that. But I thought, well, we'll unload fast in an actual friendly port and then they can move down there. It means that, uh, because I'm not entirely sure how it's going to work over here because we haven't fought and won the battle yet. So I don't want to see how things go. I don't want to, like, cause some sort of shock attack. But yes, uh, we have this force over here that's still holding off the time being. The 21st Division, the elements of the 2nd Division are moving south. They will arrive tomorrow, and which means that we'll have about a thousand AV here, plus all the artillery and engineer. Well, artillery that's moving south as well, which is good. That means that we'll be able to kick the Evan Living Hell out of the actual Philippine division that is actually holding on to Lingayan, which means then we'll push on towards Clark Airfield, which is good news. The issue is they're probably going to head towards Bataan. I would love it if they didn't, and they actually retreated towards, well, retreated towards Manila. Uh, but what I'll do then tomorrow is, once we do take Lingayan, is that unit, um, hmm. I'm not entirely sure. Probably have it remain in position for the time being. We might see what happens. He may move his forces. The good news is he's been very kind to us. He's actually not moving them directly to Bataan right now, which he could have done from the actual start of the actual campaign here. Uh, so he's been quite nice. But yes, I've moved a lot of actual search, uh, sorry, uh, patrol boats out this way. I've got the actual KI-48s actually running ASW. Uh, the interesting thing is here as well, you see that there's 11 fighters here, uh, 16 here, 9. Yeah, he looks like he's moved out a lot of his air power from Luzon. Now, the interesting thing is it seems like he's had an increasing amount of fighters over here, which is something to bear in mind. He could be moving them somewhere else. He does have a transfer range. I'm not telling you how far it is. Uh, it could be down to this area, it could be down to Mindanao. So we do have to be careful, we do have to bear in mind that there is a potential threat. It could even be down to Ambon, which would make things uh, uh, quite problematic, really. We'll have to see, frankly. We'll have to see. Right, so then we're in naval search. Might as well actually have them run proper naval search in that sort of, uh, well, <laughs> range. So I've got those guys there. I should probably... Right, G4's there, okay. Right, let's take a look. Yeah, they're fairly damaged. I would consider moving them up, but uh, I don't mind it as they are right now. They can continue to run for naval search. I would have them run naval attack. But yeah, those guns have also been causing quite a lot of damage to the G4s, which is less than great. I am sending out two heavy cruiser groups from Kandari. Well, Kandari. Kandari. Uh, down south, actually, towards Copang to try and pick up on them, try and destroy them if we can. I do worry very much about the actual submarines, but I do by moving fast to be able to avoid them. Uh, I do have a regiment that will be moving out of here shortly. I'm loading up the rest of the 5th Air Division and additional supply to move towards Megasar. They're going to be escorted by the battleship group, and uh, there's going to be an ASW group that's going to be moving out here to patrol. But they're not going to be likely setting off this turn. Uh, likely be next turn when they do set off, so at least it does give me some time here. I'm moving a light cruiser group over here, the ones that were here beforehand. They're moving over here to Kandari, uh, Kandari. And, uh, yeah, it gives us additional patrol in that area. Obviously gives us additional protection. The actual amphibious forces over here, the regiment and the actual JNAF coin, they're going to be moving towards uh, Bela Papa now. And what I'm going to do is actually move them coastal. They do have zeros running long-range cap over the top of them. Uh, what I'll do is once they're out at sea, I will change their objectives for Bela Papan, and we'll go ahead and secure Bela Papan. And the good news is it means that when we do secure Bela Papan, we'll actually have aviation engineers uh, available immediately, which is good. That would be excellent. It means we can actually make use of it uh, just straight away. I do toy with the actual idea of moving this koi, but that koi is in an alright place for the time being, which I can make use of. Uh, I do have these engineers over here. I would love to send them south towards Kopang. There's also a parachute regiment over here. Well, parachute unit. Yeah, no, it's indeed a parachute regiment. I am sending that also to Milano. I would love to get them moving down here to Kopang. But what I have to bear in mind is that these destroyers, while they're probably low on fuel and ammunition, they're still dangerous and I don't want to be tangling with them. I don't want to be tangling with them around these uh, submarines over here. So I'm going to wait for this clear up and then I'll send them south. So potentially start sending them south tomorrow. Which would be fine. Uh, right, got some APDs here. We've got these guys. They're unloading at the moment. And which is fine. I'll have them unload this fuel. Or do I have it pushed up, actually? Right, it makes sense to actually have it pushed up. These guys, I'm unloading. Unloading the port. 
the reason being I don't need them right now. So I might as well make use of them, get that fuel into the port there. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, what could I potentially load here, then, if I so wished to do so? What could be useful? So we'll take a look, then. Take a look at what fits. Uh, so I could load up another koi. 500 to 40. Yes, yeah, so I can load up a koi there, which is really nice. Uh, really easy to move out there. I could even load up a small SLF unit. Yeah, it gives me a few options there. <sighs> That's 15 assault value. I'd actually like to take that and take so, uh, so long. Uh, I know there's a small garrison there, actually. But I think potentially having more aviation support is actually more pressing right now. So we can do that. I mean, I could actually use the uh, Koi to take small bases that don't have a garrison. Like, I could take Namala. Uh, like, that would be really quite nice, actually. So I think I will do that. Yeah, they've got a 4, four assault value, which is fine. Uh, have them verify that load, they can move on Namala then. Which is something I did actually consider doing earlier in the campaign, but uh, things came up, so we're going to do it this time around. Uh, what I'm going to do then is make this a escort. No, guess not. Uh, mm, that's awkward. Yeah, because they're loaded. I can't. I can't put anything in there right now. Hmm. Okay. Well, I do have escorts here. Yeah, which is good. Some slow escorts as well, which are fine. I've got fuel over here then. What I could do then is rather than have it actually unload over there for Baldwarp, uh, but I don't particularly need it as much, is I could potentially have it moved out to uh, turn A. Turn A has about 4k. Uh, Kendari does need fuel. Kendari. I'm going to say, I'm going to, I don't know, I'm just going to stick with Kendari. I've been saying it's Kendari for so long now. Might as well stick with it. Uh, yes, I would like fuel down here, but it is a bit hot as a situation right now. So... I mean, this is it. We do need fuel down this way. We don't need it as terribly bad right now. So what I might do is actually have them move over there to turn 8. Turn out. <laughs> Whatever. Get it moving down that way. Uh, Price from port. Right, move them out there. I'll tell them not to unload, and then we can actually try to sneak that fuel into Kendari. Uh, which will be nice. Means we can actually make use of it then. Okay, these other assets can actually begin moving down there. I could have them actually land potentially to Val, but then again, I don't want to go in with Val really much. Uh, AV, I mean, a naval guard unit is okay, but it's not a huge amount. I could have it potentially aimed at Talakan, which might not be a bad idea. I could potentially use cruiser my layers for a little bit of defense. And we do have some destroyers, actually. What I could actually do with doing then is uh, just hold them off, actually, allowing them to load up and actually have it move on towards Talakan, which would be quite a nice little use there. These guys might be able to load up there. Right, so I've got those in there. Okay. Uh, that's cool, that's cool. I'll keep them in there right now. They're going to be loading here anyway. And do these guys actually have a capacity? Um, right, load. They must have a capacity. Or maybe they don't. Yeah, it looks like they don't. Okay, but that's fine. That's fine. As we'll adjust that then. Yeah, load and restarted. Right, load and restarted. Sep there we go. Uh, they should load a little bit of supply. I'm going to tell them to load a little bit of supply then. I get enough, and then we can actually use that. But yeah, that's a naval guard unit there that is available for Tarakan as well, which is good. Yeah, so I can tell them to plan for Tarakan. Okay. 
Okay. So this is it, even when you do know somebody, there's things that you end up missing. As it's always useful to actually go ahead and actually go through things once again. And just to see if there's actually anything that can be changed. But yeah, having 25 prep for Tarakan's not bad at all, really. Yeah, so obviously the majority of the unit is aboard that ship. Uh, which is worrying. Okay. Right, there we go. So they're underway. Gives us something to work with. I do have a light cruiser. Uh, two light cruisers there. Uh, there is a tanker over here. What I'm going to do then is actually have that move down towards Bavardois. I do have the Brazil Maru. Yeah, she's currently unloading over here, which is good. So she's actually going to be able to do that and then retire. I'll have her retire back to Bavardois. Yep, there we go. But that means that we actually have a aviation unit over here at uh, Vole, Vole, whatever you want to call it, Vala, <laughs> uh, which is good, means that we have an aviation support. It's a level 2 airbase as well, so it's not terrible, you know. It also does put about, uh, yeah, a good chunk of 1700 supplies, not bad at all, really, probably the last most of the game there for the most part. But yeah, it gives us something to work with there. Now, this is where things get a little bit confused now this way, because there's a lot going on. I'm moving those guys out of the way, those guys... Uh, yeah, it's a fast group as well, so I'm going to have it replenish at sea. Yeah. I do... T I do worry about it. Hmm, I do worry about it. And uh, what I'm going to do is actually have it move into Hollandia. Hollandia. I could have it, like, unload over here in Hollandia, but I'd rather not. Uh, so what I'll do then is have it move over here to Hollandia for the time being. It's not essentially, it's not especially vital that it arrives at Ley. It would be nice at Ley, but I can afford to wait. Uh, same for these guys. I'm going to have them actually just move into Hollandia just for the time being. Just just remain, do not unload, but just don't move to Ley as of yet. Uh, Katori, uh, she's going to be going north to Japan to actually go ahead and repair when she gets out that way. She's going to auto disband in Osaka, Kyoto. So we'll do that. These guys are actually heading into auto disband over here at Wenek, which is fine. Uh, they're heading out of the, he uh, the area. I do have these cruisers over here moving north. I might choose to do something else with them, but for the time being, they're going to continue to head north to track. Uh, but yeah, what I'm doing, and this may be subject to change. It's probably very much subject to change. Uh, but I'm taking the actual light... Sorry, I'm taking the destroyers and the heavy cruisers over here. They're going to be forming something of a actual wall here, a wall here as well. Uh, the AO is in a bad position, but I'm going to have it move forward to Tulagi and try to get to Tulagi and, and also expand when it does arrive. Ideally it survives, but if it doesn't, then sail IV, there's not much I can do about it. Losing the fuel is not ideal, never is, uh, but we'll try for that. These guys are heading down that way. Have them continue on towards... Well, what I could do here then is have them head towards that point. It's far, far too late, to be honest. <laughs> so, I think I will have them continue to head on towards Tulagi, actually. Just on the off chance he actually heads out that way. But as far as it goes, I'm not going to be able to catch the carriers. It might be worth actually having them head north, just in case he actually does get smart. Uh, but even then, the... It would be difficult. It might be worth it. He may choose to go back north. He may actually head east. So I could just patrol that pattern there. It might be potentially worth it. Um, if he heads that way, he's going to head right there. So we'll go with that. He can try and cover the north, just in case. I'm having all the AKs actually move south as well. Now, I do have some Hastings K4s over here. These guys are still running 9 naval attack. Aye. Hmm. Move them into the daytime. Um, have them just run a naval search for the time being then. I mean, the thing is, obviously, still have to deal with Wake in the future. So, then will come, and it will come. 
Right, these guys have been detected, but what I can do here, you can see that they've actually been able to share fuel, which is nice. There's something else still out here, which is a big worry. Yeah, so you can see they've shared fuel. Still about destroying out there. Um, but the good news is I can actually have it head out there to Marcus Island. It does make me wonder what happened to that other force that was out here, but it seems to have disappeared for the time being. And indeed, that can head to Marcus. It's still not going to make it to Marcus, it seems. Uh, not oh, even at mission speed. Yeah, not ideal. But at least they can head back. I'm going to have these guys head to Marcus as well, just try and get out to the actual AO. At least it means we can actually save a couple of them, really. Yeah, there we go. Okay. You can see that damage was already beginning to build up there. Uh, so I'll take the actual destroy the Yayoi. You can return to Marcus. Uh, the patrol boat can move up and link. Go tactical refuel. Uh, can actually go out there and meet the task force. <clears throat> Merge with it. At least then that gives us that. I'm going to keep the submarines in possibly roughly this position for the time being. Uh, still moving out there. Yep, so he's got plenty of fuel now, which is great news. So he can actually head out down there to KYJ. Not at full, of course. Right, so again, that leaves us another uh, patrol boat. But I think that would be the uh, destroyer group that we had up here. There's only the one there, which we already have something on the way towards. Uh, so it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good, to be honest. It means that at least we have been able to potentially save these destroyers, which is a very nice thing, really. And uh, trying to minimize the amount of losses we've taken is a good thing. So they can head out that way. Yeah, so just that one. These guys can return that way. Uh, which is excellent. Okay. Now, what I can do here then, because we do have forces that actually beginning to assemble, actual surface assets out this way. It does mean that we will be able to mount a second operation against, well, a third operation against Wake in the near future. I know a lot of people are like, oh yeah, you're not doing great. But then again, I've seen, I've seen this argument where people are like, oh, we're not doing very good. We are, it's just it's very difficult to deal with an opponent that has naval detection over you, has carriers that are very quick, obviously they're faster than our own carrier group. He has the ability to move around, it was difficult trying to take Wake. I think even bombing the actual airfield at the beginning of the game would have not made a terrible difference, because obviously we've seen what played out. But we can definitely see that it is a difficulty, just due to the fact that he has the ability to know where it's coming. Uh, so when we do go for weight, we obviously will use overwhelming and complete force and finally take the island. And uh, not be that long before we do mount that. It might be for the time being we just put up with it, obviously as the focus shifts down to the south. But uh, we'll chase the MK, sorry, with the KB. The KB is going to be heading down this way, by the way. Uh, they'll be moving down there. But yeah, these patrol patterns are probably varied. They'll probably be changing shortly. As I just really finalized. But yeah, most things are going well here. I'm really looking forward to seeing how quickly we can take Bataan. I mean, taking Bataan early would be a really nice victory. Uh, actually, open up Manila would be fantastic news. But what I will do then is actually hit the airfield. I would like to send a division or something of that nature to take Iba as well. That's a very nice, important port. It's also a level 2 port. And there's not many ports that are that size and lose on there that we can actually make use of. So having that one be very nice. It would give us another base closer. But yeah, taking Clark, Clark Field would be well worthwhile. It's a huge airbase, absolutely delightful. But yes, taking that would be really quite good. I mean, this is it. If he doesn't move now, that'd be great. I mean, I can actually get to Clark. I could march to Clark now if I so wish to do so. But there's a lot of troops over there. I would not really enjoy that. I think the actual brigade probably wouldn't... Uh, uh, it looks like it's jungle rough. I can't quite see. It looks like it's some nasty terrain. But even then, I don't think it'd be good for the actual brigade to have to deal with that. Uh, plus, it would leave our flank open. I'm happy to wait for the divisions to move in and then for the divisions to move south. 
it's not going to be that long before we take Luzon, especially with uh, the reinforced divisions. We're going to have four divisions in Brigade, man. That's a massive commitment to Luzon, and probably the most I've ever sent to Luzon. And then not to mention, we have additional engineer units moving out to Luzon. We might even have additional forces from Malaya once Malaya is actually completely conquered, moving out this way too. Uh, so it's going to be good. It's going to be fine. I think uh, we do have the... Uh, I think I will order an attack here. Yeah, uh, I could have them actually plan for a low star. I don't think they're going to be heading down to... <laughs> yeah, I don't think they're going to be heading out there. So I think I might have them plan for a low star. At least then it gives us a little bit of an actual advantage here, which is okay. It'll help them actually just perform that a little bit better. But yeah, they're not going to be... They're not even going to make it to Singapore before it falls, really. So make sure they're on combat mode. Make sure they attack. It's 490 assault value. It should be able to manage it. So hopefully that goes well. In China, what I'm going to be doing actually is sending the majority of the divisions over here. The reason being... Uh, I also have a couple actual headquarters here. So I have three headquarters in this position here. What I'm going to do then is actually have those army headquarters remain in position. I'm going to have a division move south towards Kaifeng. That can link up with a second division over here as it moves to just actually flank Changchao, just south. So then I can actually cross here and actually get there. Uh, Changchao should fall to two divisions probably. It's not going to take much. Uh, there's going to be a brigade and an actual Chinese unit remain in position there as well, just the crossroads. What I'm going to do then is take the rest of our forces actually march up here to the north. It's not great terrain. It is uh, wooded terrain as far as I can tell. I think so. I couldn't quite see what uh, what it said there. But then I will actually march upon Lo Yang. What I want to do here then is essentially march on Lo Yang. So then that gives me the ability to march forces down here towards Nanyang really. But uh, what I'm going to be looking towards doing is actually marching our forces up over here to Xi'an, which means seizing control of these key points over here. And if I can get there, they'll be quite good. I have two divisions that are marching along this road. They're going to be ultimately aiming to clear and open this road over here. We'll have, we'll obviously have to try and just obviously occupy the road ourselves, which is going to be uh, easier said than done. But we'll see what we can do there. Divisions are getting into position over here in central China. Uh, I've got a couple of divisions that have been assembled over here now. Yeah, and as far as it goes, we're just kind of waiting for the time being. I would like to actually have the ability to bombard one cow, so I think I might wait for that and try not to tip him off, really. He doesn't seem to be reacting terribly quick, but that's fine. Uh, it doesn't really seem to care terribly much at this moment in time, but that's okay. What I'm going to do here, due to the fact that the 5th Fleet is actually here in location, the 5th Fleet actually being a command headquarters, as far as I'm aware, would actually grant us the ability... Uh, to use torpedoes here, actually. Yes, command radius 9. I think that would allow us to use torpedoes here from Saipan. Considering they're in a hex out from Saipan, that might be useful for the time being. I'll actually move them south then as time goes on if the situation changes, but it does mean that we'd have torpedo capability out here at Saipan. There's always a chance that he actually moves north, so there's a chance. Hint. And actually having something over here is not a bad thing. That second air division is actually moving south towards Ley. Uh, probably it's going to be finding itself positioned in Gazmata, probably to begin with. Uh, but we'll we'll see there, really. What I'm going to do then is... Let's see, so there's still Renite Naval Attack. I'm going to change that out to Naval Search. Uh, there we go. So that's 50-50. Yeah, some of them are out for a long while. Let's see. Uh, what unit do you belong to? Oh, so you're based out there to Largi, okay. Uh, four days before all that unit's actually made available. Okay. Right. How long until they're available? 19 with that one, okay. This one over here has a reserve. What I'm going to do then is actually transfer this unit. It has a low amount of fatigue, which is good news. I'm going to have it transferred over here to Rabal. The reason being it gives us additional naval search in that area, which is good. It's a very useful thing to have uh, without a shadow of a doubt, really. It is interesting over here. We have set our actual forces to actually try and intercept him if he does try to flee, which he's likely to do. The most likely option here is he goes at full, but we could be wrong. Uh, so we'll have to see really what happens there. Right. 
So there's no aircraft currently in the pool, but that's okay. Can make use of that. And we yet we'll have them run naval search over here. I'm gonna have that on sixty. Um, I'll have it on seventy thirty for the time being. No, I've, yeah, yes, seventy thirty. Yeah, that's fine. Ah, uh, sixty forty is fine. A little bit more. We don't need to go overboard. Uh, but there we go. So that's kind of what's going on here at this moment in time. We're just trying to secure our actual positions and really advance yet harder. Well, things are going well. So thank you for watching. Tano Hanka Panzai. See you next time.